Hey YouTube, it's Caden here, and it is Tuesdays with uh, your gender blenders. This week's topic is coming out to yourself. Um, coming out is a different process for everyone. I, let's see, I probably really started coming out to myself probably like seven or eight years ago. Um, before that, I kind of always knew um, that I should be a boy, but I come from Iowa and, um, there's not really a lot of, like, resources or, um, examples of that kind of thing there, so you don't really learn much about it, um, when you're younger, and actually I didn't learn much about it probably until I was jeez, I don't even know, 20, 21, 22, somewhere in there. Um, so, I mean, when I was a kid, I used to go out and hang with the boys and play basketball, and I had the complete, like, He-Man set and He-Man bed sheets and all that crap. I wouldn't play with dolls or Barbies or anything like that. Um, but my mom just figured I was like a tomboy or whatever, so... Um, even though I was so boyish, like, girls are allowed a certain grace period when they're younger, the tomboy phase, um, where you're allowed to be, um, more boyish, and, and, and the adults just figure you'll grow out of it eventually, so they allow you that time to work through that. Um, so my mom started, once I really hit puberty, my mom started really pushing the female, um, feminization like aspects and um, socializing me towards more female things um, which didn't really work that well um, but being still you know being from Iowa you don't really hear um, any other options so of course it was just assumed that um, I would just turn out to be like some big butch dyke or whatever so um when I was 17 I came out as a lesbian um because you know you don't really I didn't really know what else to call it and uh that's that's um so that's what I decided it should be called um so I came out when I was 17 as a lesbian and then, um, I went along like that for a few years. Like, I got a girlfriend right away when I came out. And I was with her for like two, two and a half years. Um, and then I went right into another relationship out of that one. Um, for like, let's say I was about 19, like 19 and a half then. Um, and I was in college, and even though my college, like, the campus had an LGBT, like, group and everything, I never went to the group or, or anything like that, um, so I didn't really get a chance to hear about any other lifestyles. Um, and then I met my next girlfriend, and, um, I moved to Dubuque, Iowa, and... Um, there we started going to the clubs, um, because in, in Iowa you can get into the clubs probably younger, like the rural states you can get in younger than you can in like big cities or whatever. So I started going to the clubs really young when I was 14, I started going to the bars. Um, so we would always go to the clubs, like every Friday night they would have a drag show, um, but I still, like I felt like... I was part of that community, but I didn't feel like I should be like a lesbian part of that community, but I was dating lesbians, and since I didn't really know what else to call it, um, that's where I stayed for like 10, 10 years or something. Um, but we would go to the clubs and we'd go to the drag shows, Well, most of the drag queens, we didn't really have kings in Iowa, there's not a lot of kings in Iowa, um, but most of the drag queens were not just queens, they were beyond that. They were, well, many of them had transitioned, but nobody really talked about it. 
Um, and if they did talk about it, they were just pretty much commenting on um, the fact that they were on estrogen and had like boob jobs to make themselves better drag queens or or whatever. So they didn't really see it as um, an option for for anything other than being like a better drag performer. Um, but when I was like probably like 20, 21, one of my friends, um, my best friend actually, we had had a fight and I hadn't talked to him for a good long while, probably like seven, eight months. And when I finally did get back in contact with him, uh, we were just joking around um, and talking. And during that time when we had not been talking or whatever, I had started to pursue like um, binding binding my chest, um, which wasn't really a big deal then because I really didn't have, like, anything to bind. I was literally, like, an A cup or something that really wasn't, um, too bad. They've gotten kind of bigger since then. I'm now, like, a, like, a B, but still, um, I didn't really have much to bind, but I had pursued binding and packing then, but I didn't know about soft packing, um, so I was just buying, like, just trying to figure out what I could pack with that I would have, like, available to me at any, um, local, like, sex shop or whatever. And my girlfriend was, at the time, was, um, she worked at a sex shop, so I was able to go there and, like, freely look around and, and whatnot. Um, but we started, started talking and, um, I had found on the internet where you could pee standing up the that you could teach yourself to pee standing up without um, use of any kind of like aids or anything and I had been practicing that um, to the point where I had gotten it down um, just by like my hip movement or whatever I could pee standing up and I, I had made a comment about it and um, he had commented back that he could also pee standing up but he was using some kind of like like stand to pee device or whatever and then he told me um, that he had come out as trans in the time that we had stopped talking and I didn't really know anything about it so he really introduced me to the whole thing and started giving me information and the more information he gave me the more I was like yes this is this is it this fits this is what I'm talking about um, so that actually began quite a few years ago and then um, but I was still dating like lesbians and they still, you know, um, wanted to be lesbians and I didn't feel like I could date them and transition at the same time or whatever. So I put off my transition um, and I was in that relationship for like another two years and then I went right into another relationship um, with someone that was younger than me and not out to her family yet. And she came out as a lesbian to them, so I couldn't um, transition then because they were going through the whole transition with her being a lesbian. So I was in that relationship for like a year and a half. Um, and then I went right into another one, like three months after that ended, with a huge lesbian. And, uh, and there was just... I started my transition in that relationship when I got out of it, and now I'm married. And my wife is very supportive, and she's not. She doesn't identify um, as lesbian or whatever. She just um, is kind of pansexual, like queer, whatever. Um, so she's very supportive, um, and she wants to know all about it. But I'm finding myself going through like a dysphoria almost now, and I don't really want to talk about it with her. Um, and that's that's another whole other video um, but that's really my process I'm coming out to myself and now I'm just coming out to everyone else um, but I'm pretty I'm not exactly comfortable with myself but I've accepted it and now I'm trying to go through the process to change it so that's what I have for you guys um, on coming out to yourselves it's a process and sometimes it's a really long process and it's gonna keep being a process um, 
but just listen listen to yourselves. This came up repeatedly and for many years I'd push it away and push it away and it'd always come back. So if it if it's always coming back, you should probably listen to yourself and figure out what's going on. Um, but that's all I have for you guys this week. I will see you guys next week. Stay tuned and uh, make sure you subscribe. And we want to thank you guys for watching. Um, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys.